Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about displacement maps today. So we have very simple geometry in our scene, so modern displacement maps, and using Arnold, we can render our... The displacement can actually happen during rendering. There go. So if I just bring this up, this is the displacement map here. There we go. And uh, you can see it's a grayscale image. And when used to displace it, you can see the effect the grayscale values are having on the raised surface of the geometry. And again, this is very simple geometry and scene, and the details happening in the rendering. So let's uh, see how we set that up. It's a plane. I've added a little bit of um, detail to it just so that the edges stay together. And using uh, a displacement map, which is using grayscale values in order to create uh, height or to distort it th through displacing the geometry. Uh, so there's my map, and then this is the result. So this is just the plane, and the displacement happens in the render, and that's one of the nice things about using displacement maps in Arnold now. You don't have to have very super detailed geometry. Uh, as long as you're careful with your iterations set up, you can have a pretty quick rendered displacement and have some nice looking displacement geometry. Okay, so let's take a look at how to set up for our displacement mapping. So if I come in here, first I'm going to look at my object attributes. So uh, sort of typical Arnold workflow. There's a a few things you have to do, but then you can get a good payoff with this. So here we go. So we come into our object parameters, our object attribute, and if you look under Arnold, here you go, we look under subdivision. So this is what happens at render. So what you do is you choose Cat Clark, which is short for Cat Mill Clark, which is a smoothing algorithm. Okay, so it'll create um, additional geometry so that it can be smooth. Uh, and we can choose the iterations. Now, of course, I want to use, say iterations as iterations, but I won't annoy you with my mispronunciation. So I'm going to change the iterations to four. Okay? So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to change the height to 10. We have something called bounds padding here. So when Arnold displaces geometry, it uh, utilizes a virtual bounding box. And so you need to set the right size depending on how much, uh, how much displacement is actually going to happen, and uh, it won't uh, inhibit the displacement of it. And I'll show you what that looks like a bit later. So I think we're okay with this. So this is what you want to set up first. Save this. Uh, I think starting at four iterations is good. You can go a bit higher. But the higher you go, it will slow down your renders as it's, as it's smoothing the geometry and creating the iteration so it can, can displace. Just be careful with it. I'm okay between about 4 and 6. Once you get above 8, I've noticed a, a, a lot of slowdown in my renders. So there we go. So, I'm in the hypershade, and what I want to do, I have a file node here, and I have a displacement shader. So, and this is a basic AI standard surface shader that I've applied to the model beforehand. Here we go. You want to create a file node, just hit tab, there you go, you can create a texture node, there you go. Okay. And then for this, you can create a displacement shader node there. Sorry. But it'll plug into this. Okay, so there we go. So that's all I have. Now, the nice thing about my file node is I've already got my material there. There you go. I'll just solo it. There is my displacement map. Now, you can draw your own map. I've got this out of a mapping program. There's all sorts of ways of getting displacement. And really, it's a great way of, you know, especially for things like terrain, it's a pretty quick and dirty way to do this and create this quite easily in Photoshop. 
So I've got my displacement map. I want to put it into the displacement here. So it's just going to take the gray scaling, but I know what the red channel looks like, so I'm going to just bring this over to displace, okay? And then I'm going to plug it into the displacement shader so I can take the displacement out. I'll just make sure that's assigned to the object, okay? Now there are some settings in here, so uh, the displacement is being controlled by the map. There we go. Uh, I'm going to keep the scale at 5, so remember this is anything that this shader is applied to will have this scale. Now there are some settings in here, so I could have it based purely on the shader. So I could set bounds padding or scalar 0, and scalar 0 has to do with, based on what map you're using, uh, what what is registered as zero displacement. So sometimes you have to make some adjustments, but this is set up. So we can take a look at the result of this. So I'm going to just leave this as it is. I think I'm okay. I'm going to close this, come in here. So again, I'll leave my height at 10, and let's just render this and see what it looks like. And there is my displacement. Now I can make changes in the shader or based on a per object basis. So if I want to change the height to say 5, make it lower. So if you want to use the same shader on two different objects with different heights, then I would change these values on a per object basis. Okay? So, um, if I bring the iterations down, there's still some displacement, but you can see it's not properly subdividing the geometry, so not as detailed. And if I bring it up, I'll bring it up to 8. You should see that my render times slow down a bit. And as you can see, it is taking a while to do this. I'll just pause the recording and come back in a minute. So as you can see, there we go. So I can make adjustments and just test out and see what this looks like. Eight iterations really slowed it down. I'd probably go four or six. I'm going to go for five right in the middle. I think I'm okay with this. All right, so I've got two spheres in here. I've applied the same shader, and the difference is I've changed the height values on a per object basis. So this one is set to a height of six, and this other sphere is set to a height of one. All right, and just to get an idea, so if I change this, I'll change it both to uh, to four, just to, so we can look at the difference here. So they're both set to a four. A minute to render. And you see, I've already done my bounds padding here. If I come in here, I'm going to change this deliberately too low on the right sphere. And let's just see what that looks like. you can see that the displacement is cut off. So I'll change that back. So I think I've got enough bounds padding there and it is now displaced. Got plenty of room to displace. Nothing's cut off, no black areas. Okay, so there we go. Now, what if I change the iteration value. So let's have a quick look at that. So let me make sure these are the same. So I'll make that 4 and 500. 4 and 500. And let's just take a quick. So this one, the iterations are set at 1. I will set the left one to iterations of 5. And let's just take a look at the difference. You can see it hasn't really subdivided the surface very well, so there you go. And that's a, a quick tour of displacement maps in Arnold.